Today's signature figure is um, what Atoy called the Copa Cape. So it involves a Copa movement and then a kind of cape, you're throwing a cape around yourself. Um, and it continues with a couple of turns. So we're just going to throw it and then tell you why we like it and when you can best throw it into your partner work dancing. So from this side here, one, two, five, six, seven, one, two, five, six, seven, one, three, five, six, seven, one, three, five, six, seven, and one, five, six, seven. So you saw it involves a couple of elements. First, it's just a crossbody lead into a crossbody, um, into a cross-handed copa. And from there, why we like it is because you have to be very close. So it's a big opening into a very close back-to-back -back movement. But from there, it goes continuously into a pivot and into left turns, which Arthur likes a lot. And they're very difficult to do. So it involves a couple of uh, continuous turns as well as this cape movement. Any other reasons why we like it? I like it not for the typical reasons. I like it because it works out a lot of my weaknesses, which I think I share with a lot of ladies out there. So we've got a weird handhold for the copa, and we've got a surprise pivot on one. We also have some left turns, which aren't given to us very commonly on the dance floor. So this is the kind of exercise that you can use to get good at all the things that you don't get to practice so much. And it's actually a song, you probably want to do it to mid -tom the mid-tempo or faster salsa movements because it's continuous so all people are going to see is your arms up and down as the leader and for the follower just coming around into these continuous changes of directions and turns. So uh, mid-tempo to faster songs. So let's get right into it. We're starting from a crossbody lead. You're going to do a hook turn gentlemen. So one, two, come around, bring this right hand over, that's just for styling on three, then get the right hand her right hand with your right hand from underneath on five, five, six, seven. So here you're in a cross-handed open break. Um, just for one comment for your handhold, you have finger to finger or fingers to fingers here and palm to palm facing here. If you ever get into this turn, turning around this way and your right finger slides in, which it normally should when you're doing a right turn, and you have the hand here, on this next move, either way, when you open her up and you pull her in, this finger has to rotate under. So on one, she's going to sit in her hip for the in and out, or the copa movement, and you have both hands down, just the middle finger. From here, on three, you're stepping towards her in her. This is the cape movement. So both wrists come together. My momentum comes from the right hand. You bring her wrists together and step in on three with your left hand shoulder to shoulder. And then your right hand is free, so you're going to step around on five, Bring both hands up, six, seven. So you're ending up back to front, your front, you're back to her front, and then your left hand goes against your neck. You're going to continuously rotate around on one. So as you're walking over on seven, you're going to step on one to get into her pivot. That's one continuous move. So as I said, you're going to walk around on five, six, seven, bring the left hand against your neck, which is a signal to her that you're not really using this as a lead. Then step over, continuing your right rotation on one. This right hand goes down straight, which gets her into a pivot. From here, this hand lets go. You're replacing on two. Now on three, this hand gives inside turns. You're going to give her two turns on three and four. Three, four, and then this finger rotates up. So I'm pointing towards the ceiling to now go right on five, six, seven, bringing the left hand again in, and from here you can just continue with the next basic or crossbody lead. Just a couple of comments, because we went through it once quick. First is hand holes. So once you come over here, the first important thing is opening both hands up, and, or bringing them down, but having your palms up. From here, this down goes continuously into the up movement, left foot, left foot on three. So on three, you're stepping in with her. Soft hands, you have to raise her, so it's a little bit uncomfortable for her. Now you walk into this turn as you're coming around, dropping the hands, straightening them out, and on seven, you're in a back-to-front movement. And from here, continuously going right into the pivot. That's the stop of the right movement, and from there, you're going into the left movement for her. Again, finger signals 
the end of the turn and you're going to walk around into your basic. Ladies, from the crossbody lead, in, out, he's going to release your side. And here he's getting cross hands, so watch out for this hand. Now this should look like a typical copa in and out prep to you. So you might get the hint at this point that you're doing a copa. The weird thing is, is that the copa is a beginner step, but it has a very strange feeling to it because he's going to stay in your way. He's going to angle you slightly to his right side. So you're going to get a forward motion, but also sideways. So you start out stepping forward and you have to go sideways. Now because the two hands are out, this is not going to feel as clear as the other types of copa handholds. So you really have to be careful here and this is one of the lessons that we're going to practice today. He's going under and he's also bringing my hands down which helps me sit into my right hip. So this is all on one. And like Daniel said, this is very continuous. He's going to swing this back up. So that means my left foot doesn't move. I just transfer my weight back to that foot as I close my right foot. Now this turn is on three on the right foot. Like I say before, Daniel's much taller, taller than I, so I have to allow him to bring my arms up as high as he needs them without pushing them. Now here's the interesting part. As you think you're going to be stepping five, six, seven, he's going to turn, so he's actually not going to allow you to step back. You're going to end up marching in place, and that is an early signal that you're going to be doing a stationary figure at this point. So take that hint. If you're marching in place, five, six, seven, you know you're not going to be stepping forward on one. One, he's in front of you. Two, he made you go in one spot. He's going to bring his arm out and your arm out to the side and down. Now this helps your hips react. Daniel moves his whole body, never just his arms. So I can get the sense from his body and his arms. So see this motion, it goes out to the side. He helps me pivot on my left foot. So see how I went, five, six, seven in place. By the time I do one, all I'm doing is slipping my right foot forward. I'm not putting any weight in it, and I'm pivoting into my left hip. So Daniel helps me do that by mimicking that movement. From here, he lets go of the left hand, so you get to use it for balance. Go onto your left foot, so don't forget, this is the same technique you always use for your turns. Bring your right foot in. Now you're turning on your left foot, even though I'm paddling because it's very slow. This signal helps me stop. And if you're on your left foot, which you should be, or try to be, you can point with your right on five, so you can step back on six, seven, while he, he's doing his thing. Otherwise, if you had your feet together just for practice, don't forget you want to get back on proper timing this way. So before we practice it, conceptually for both of the leader and the follower, these turns are on three, so the copa in and out turn is on three, as well as this pivot has the turn on three. So the one is the preparation, three is the execution. And as uh, Arthur said before, the crossbody lead is just a setup move here for your hand. For the guy, that's very important. If you bring the arm straight, she might think that you want to have her walk through. So this right arm, while my left arm is opening up, also opens diagonally. So it almost goes a little bit to the side for her to sit in that hip, versus if I'm pulling it straight back here, it's less comfortable. So there's a little bit of an angle in this here. But as it's coming down, it's straightening out. Then what's important here, that's on one. And you're almost mim mimicking her because on three, you're stepping on the same foot, the left foot in this case, as she is pointing with, to come under. And that's the tricky part for your footwork, to continuously rotate around. Five, six, seven, cross over, one. So you're both almost working with the hips at the same time. So it's not only the girls that do that. Now let's practice the whole thing, focus on the hand angle change and the preparation on one, execution on three. First the crossbody lead, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, basic one. Do it from the other side, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, Five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, and one, five, six, seven. I think that's it. Have fun practicing. And um, guys, focus on the footwork and make the ladies feel comfortable.